My first round might have made you win, it might have been quite raw, but now you know what you're getting, we'll have a little more. The first time I met Ginge, I instantly knew his type. That kind of veil of confidence and arrogance, it's not hard to wipe away that version of you. You see, uh, fuck me, I keep on forgetting this mother. <laughs> cool. Your self-obsessed preaching, you love the sound of your own voice, but what you fail to realise is nobody listens by choice. If you look at your friends, there's a clear pattern we see. Young, impressionable girls, too self-medicated to see that you're full of shit and don't shit at that. Every time you open your mouth, you sound like a twat. <laughs> you surround yourselves with broken young things, you're like sour onto their Nazgul in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and the Dragon Day too. And the writing they do, you want it on you. <laughs> the apparatus is so wizened and bent, you're like a cross between a red squirrel and an ant. <laughs> so, you try to storm their keep like the Battle of Helm's Deep with overwhelming force, of course, but their walls are too steep and so down as you creep to their vulnerable spot. <laughs> but it's quite tight and you just might prematurely blow off. <laughs> You keep your head and bide your time. You find, try and find the one ring chat and it's mine, it's mine. You fumble around like a riddle in the dark. You put it on the line, ignite the spark. You're horny like a balrog, your weapon in your hand. Problem is your bitches are like Gandalf. You shall not pass, they scream, and make their final stand. So. <laughs> You ignore their valiant cries. You'll smite them then and there and leave them with a parting gift, a lock of ginger hair. <laughs> That's my one ginger one. You think you're Aragorn to their Arwen, a perfect loving match, but it's more Saruman and Wormtongue, except they've got a snatch. <laughs> from them, the One Ring. Like Boromir, you see, but you want them to blow your horn. That's not how it's supposed to be. So, you can think you own me and everything I am, but reality bites more than fiction, ladies and gents. This man's my number one fucking fan. <laughs> It seems like I put you off at the front, uh, the beginning of that there. I didn't expect to make you swerve. I mean, words have got to dig for a lot of holes of fat to hit a fucking nerve. <laughs> <laughs> there, listen carefully, because this is literally the most false bit of wordplay you will ever hear in your life. You can't even lie on king size beds because you. <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. <laughs> You can't even lie on king size beds because you might fall through. You're an a cappella singer. You've got no more than words, do you? It'll make the sky fall on your paradise when your musical family see they could do this with or without you. Easy. <laughs> Those are the songs you made to build your career, and I'm using them to bring it to a close just to prove it's just that easy and that's just how it goes, <laughs> buster. <laughs> you a teacher, you could use that to undermine me, but you a student on this local scene, you fall in line behind me. I'm not saying you can't do it on this scene without me, I'm just saying I can make it hard, ask Sam Burns if you doubt me. <laughs> I can make you hate me for your art, like you're hated by your arteries. <laughs> you made a serious error, even stepping up to spar with me. What made you think you could go bar to bar with me? I'm a delicate degenerate with linguistic talent. Eloquent, irreverent, with poison. Irrelevant, you mean? No, I mean irreverent. <laughs> with poison, with balance, with elegance and decadence, I'm ready to savage this desolate, irrelevant attempt at a challenge. <laughs> Those bars were kind of middle class, just to make sure you know I understand. This is a really odd way for us to stand up man to man. 
gangsters we are not, sir, but to preserve one rap battle tradition, I'm going to finish this round with a little exposition. I know it's going to tell your audience, and your wife, and your students, before you fly by with your round, about the time you drunkenly told my 17-year-old friend you'd like a pile drive her into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs>